And then we come into the real heart of the, uh, the product. Hey guys, so this is a look at the almost production ready version of the Rifats Edition Math Manager. It's not quite there, but 99% of what you're going to see on this page is what is going to make it in, into production. First thing you need to do is connect the, the app to the, the module. Okay, so you just press Bluetooth, list of the available Bluetooth devices come up, select uh, MM Riv, that will be the Math Manager Rivatsa Edition and this will take you into the app. So at the long the top, you've got Math Map Cal Set. Um, so let's assume it's the first time you're using it. Let's just open Set first of all. And this brings up, at the top here, we've got RPM calibration. So we're gonna be using a zero to five volt signal for the RPM. So we can choose something as that fires every half an RPM, every RPM or twice per RPM. On this particular car, we're using one per RPM, that gives us RPM figures. Just below it then, we've got sensors live. Uh, so we've got the actual voltage that are coming from our sensors. So in this case, we've got a 14% on the MAF sensor and 59% on the uh, MAP sensor. The multipliers underneath, this will go on the production version. It'll just be RPM calibration and sensors live. So we need to select one for it to start logging the RPM. We can just go into the car menu briefly. So this is where you set it to use uh, the auto-tune function or not. If you've connected the unit to a wideband lambda sensor, you can use the unit to automatically tune uh, the uh, MAF sensor signal to get the AFR that you choose. We'll come to that, the way you choose the AFR in a minute. Uh, at the moment, we've got use lambda across the top, so you can choose that yes or no. If it's yes, it's going to use the lambda. If it's no, it's just going to be the fixed values that you put in. Underneath then, it's got lamb live, so this is the current voltage that's coming from the uh, lambda sensor. Underneath that, we've got uh, two things. We've got math sensor offset, and we've got adjustment tolerance. Like I said, this is uh, a pre-production version. Um, but 99.99%, the adjustment tolerance option is going to go away and the math sensor offset may also go away as well but at the moment let's assume it's it's not there so we won't go into that in any more detail i think basically it's just going to push the production date too far back so i don't think we're going to use it so that's the car menu basically we're just seeing the lambda voltage lambda sensor voltage and we're switching on the auto tune or off switching the auto tune off that's what's in the car menu we'll come into the math menu so we see here math sensor in and uh, out requested so we can see what we're getting in from the math sensor and we can see what we're sending back to the car's ECU to manipulate the uh, math sensor to get the air fuel ratio that we want really for diagnostic purposes underneath that we've got the lock math lock function so basically what we can do here we can set the maximum voltage that the uh, the Revatsa edition will send to the car's ECU so if for some reason your car has got uh, a 4.5 volt maximum voltage that it expects to see from the car's MAF sensor you can set 4.5 volts here um, the reason we do that is because the the Revatsa edition and the math manager in general will send a 5 volt signal if you want and maybe you get a check engine light if you send more than 4.5 or 4.6 whatever it may be for your car so the option is there is the option is there to put a limit on the voltage that we will send to the car's ECU to avoid those sort of issues and below that then we've got math clamp voltage idle and we've got gear math voltage so what these two options do, the clamp voltage at idle, we can fix the voltage that we send to the car's ECU when the, when the car is at idle, regardless of the signal that we're getting from the MAF sensor. So if for some reason the MAF sensor signal is, is unstable at idle and maybe the car can't idle properly, we can send a fixed voltage to the car's ECU to, stable, to stabilize that. Really, on a car that's on a setup that's operating properly, we shouldn't need to use this. But if for some reason you just need to tempor temporarily get up and running, this is what the Revatsa Edition will do. You can decide for yourself if that's going to solve whatever problem you're having. 
And likewise, the gear map voltage, same principle as the idle voltage, except the gear map voltage will send a fixed uh, MAF sensor signal to the car's ECU at a greater vacuum than the idle voltage. So, for example, if you've got a car uh, with a MAF sensor and an atmospheric blow off valve, when you change gear, at, say at 7000 RPM, when you come off the clutch, you're going to get a bigger vacuum than you do at idle. And it's the, at that point we can send a fixed voltage to the car's ECU. So you can use this feature to try, we make no guarantees, but to try and stop the rich, rich condition that you may get uh, when you are changing gear. Basically, when the valve is vent into the atmosphere and that air is still passing through the MAF sensor and it's giving you a rich condition between gear changes. That's the principle behind that. We can't guarantee that will work for your particular application, but the option is there. So in the math menu, this is where we set the output voltages for idle and gear and the max math. For the trigger condition, we need to go into the map menu. So let's just go down here and deal with that first. We can see idle stabilization by map. So this is where we set the threshold for the uh, vacuum signal where we send that fixed voltage to the car's ECU. So really you want to set this number just below a normal vacuum percentage that you get when the engine is warmed up in a normal operating condition. So if you're getting, for example, for 15% map signal at idle, set the idle stabilization to like 14%, and then that way you know that the uh, it's not uh, it's not set, sending that fixed voltage to the car's ECU when it's not needed. But obviously you can adjust that, you can adjust this setting to what you want. This is what we recommend, but obviously we don't know your situation, so uh, feel free to adjust it as you want. But that's our recommendation. And likewise with the gear stabilizer map, we set the uh, map sensor signal where we want to trigger the gear stabilization. You want to set this lower than the idle stabilization map. um so what else do we have um i think that's enough i don't think i need to go into any more detail there then we come into the real heart of the uh, the product itself so we've got map live across the top at the moment it's saying 59 percent we've got the low down the side and we've got rpm across the top so we've got one two three We've got three across the top, three RPM points, three columns, if you like, under the RPM. And on the left, we've got load. So the RPM is going to be RPM, obviously. And then we've got the load going down the side on the left. So this can be map. It could even be math. Oh, sorry. Just to backtrack a minute there. On the map lock function, it's probably best not to use the map lock function and the auto tune function at the same time because if for some reason the you're using the the way you've set up the map lock function is it's using uh, the car is needing to use that fixed voltage that fixed voltage that we're sending to the car's ECU is going to start to fight the auto tune function there's going to be a bit of a conflict there which will have major issues on the drivability so don't use the auto tune function and the math lock function together if you want to use the math lock function i'd recommend get the tuning done uh, with the auto tune function first then switch it off and then use the math lock function function after if you want to use a math lock function, completely optional. On a normally operating engine, there's probably no reason to use a math lock. It is, it's there for completeness. So, sorry for that little detour. We'll come back to the map, map function here. So, like I said, we've got three columns at the top for RPM, and we've got three down the side for load. So, what does this mean? In the first column, in this example, we've got 1565 RPM. So, all the numbers under this are relevant to when the engine is uh, revving at less than 1565 RPM. And likewise, in this example, we've got 20% 20, 20 as our first load uh, point. So when the engine is at less than 20% load and less than 1565 RPM, 
we are going to be using the 109, 0 0.42 and the 1.09 figures. So let me just explain what the 1.09, the 0 0.42 and the 1.09 is. I'll start off on the left, the 1.09 this is going to be the auto-tune function. This is the dynamic multiplier that the Ravazza edition has automatically calculated to achieve that the AFR that you've chosen. The AFR that you choose is the middle column. In this particular example, it's showing 0 0.42. In the final edition, this is going to be showing an AFR number. So 12, 13, 14, 15, whatever the case may be. So you set the AFR to what you want. You set the, uh, and then the, and then the unit will automatically alter the multiplier to get to your chosen AFR. The right number, 1.09, this is the fixed multiplier. So you need to put a value in here when you get the unit. It may be, uh, 1.5 when you get the unit, it may be 1 when you get the unit, maybe 0.5. Whatever the case may be, you need to put a ballpark figure in the right-hand column under the RPM. So you can see under 3100, we've got 1.01, 1.4, 1.4. When you first connect and use the Ravazza edition, you need to put some values in here that are relevant to your car. So if I can give an example... You put in 1.2 for all these figures here, and you put your AFRs in like 14.7. Let's assume you put 14.7 everywhere. Go out for a drive. For the first six minutes, for the first five minutes, sorry, the, the Revator Edition will be using these fixed values in the right-hand column. And then after that, it will begin the auto-tune function. Why does it wait five minutes? Because we don't want the auto-tune function tuning the engine if it is uh, under warm-up conditions. We want the engine to be at fully operating temperature before it starts to make any adjustments to the EMF sensor signal. So we assume that we've been driven, driving for longer than five minutes. If we are using the auto-tune function, it's optional. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, but let's assume we are using it. After five minutes, it will start to automatically adjust the the numbers in black, the dynamic multipliers, to achieve the AFR that we've set. So if it's the first time that we use the car, first sorry, if it's the first time that we use the product, there's a good chance the numbers on the left for the black background will be very different from the numbers that we put in in the right column. But that's entirely normal, but it gives us a ballpark figure of where to start. So we go out, we drive for, say, 10 minutes. We come back in from the session, we stop in the pits, we don't switch the engine off, we open the app, and we look at how the numbers in black compare to the numbers on the right. If, for example, we're getting not 1.09 there, but that has gone to 1.19, for example, we can safely assume that we need to increase the fixed, fixed multiplier by say 10 points if the next one down on the second row if it's not saying 1.4 but it's saying 1.38 and we've chosen 1.4 then i think we're okay to leave that if it's within point point oh five, i think we're pretty close you don't really need to do anything obviously if you want to get it closer that's fine but you don't want anything where it's uh, 1.09 for example here and then and the one here is like 1.19 because that tells us that the auto tune function has gone to its maximum range and it still might not be getting the AFR that we desire. The maximum the auto tune function will adjust the fixed voltage fixed multipliers by is 0 0.1, 10% plus or minus 10%. In reality, with a math sensor, that is a massive amount of adjustment. There's no real reason to allow the uh, Revazza addition to adjust the voltage by more than 10% from the fixed voltage in the auto-tune function. So if, like in my example, let's say this is at 1.19, then feel free to put the, um, the set voltage here up to 1.2, 1.21, and then repeat the process and see where the dynamic number comes back after that. Really, what we're looking for is like after we've gone for a session, 
when we come back into the pits that the uh, numbers in the black are like within 0 0.03, 0 0.04 of the numbers that we've set here. And until you get to that point, just adjust the uh, fixed numbers here until you get there. So use the numbers in the black column as a guide. It may be easier to understand what I'm saying in the instruction manual. So in the video description, I'll put a link to the product on the Movi Chip website. The instruction manual is there. You can learn all about the intricacies, the methods, how it works there. So you can get a, a more thorough understanding of how it works. But that is basically it. Whereas the math manager, the simple one, the original math manager just had this on um, two separate screens the AFR target and the multiplier. On the uh, on the Revatsa edition, we've combined that all into uh, one screen. So how do we adjust them? Basically, we click plus or minus. When we do that, these numbers at the top will stop updating automatically. And then they will only update when we adjust the value. So when you first open the map menu, probably the best thing is just to leave it open until all the values are populated. You might need to wait, you know, 20, 30 seconds from all to have all the, the areas to have a uh, number in them. And that is basically it, guys. Uh, we think it's a pretty powerful device. The math, the math sensor is very powerful for adjusting the fueling. Um, but it also gives you the power of a wideband math sen a wideband lambda sensor without having to tune it manually. So you can basically fit it. You set your AFR targets. You set your load points here. You set your RPM points. And then you can just drive around, look at the numbers in the black for guidance, and adjust your multiplier to suit um, the numbers that you get in that have been dynamically tuned. And you can get perfect fuel into whatever whatever you want. It has got an, a nine cells altogether. It's three by three. So you need to work out if this is enough resolution for you. Um, something else I should say. the map, This app that we've got here that we're looking at as a demonstration, this is purely to set it up. To, to get the feeling where we want it. Once you've got the multiple, if you're happy where the multipliers are, you're happy where you've got the uh, low points, you're happy where you've got the RPM points, you can, you don't, you can close the app, disconnect it from Bluetooth and never use it again. The values are going to be stored in the app. Every time you get in the car, you don't have to do anything with the phone. You don't even need, you don't need to take the phone out of your pocket. You don't need to use the phone to use the product that you, you're using the phone purely to get the settings set up, 99% of the time, you're just going to be using your key for your car and driving it as normal. You're not going to have this app running on your dashboard. There's no need. So that's it, guys. This is the uh, Map Manager Revatsa. Like I said, link in the video description. You can go there. You can read the instruction manual. You can download the instruction manual. Have a look at it. See if it's going to do what you want it to do. If you've got any questions, there's links there on the product page. You know, click one of those. If you want to keep up to date with the latest developments, the little tweaks that we're doing, subscribe to our newsletter, and then you're going to get like an email uh, when we put some uh, new articles up on the website, if you've got any product developments, etc. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, obviously. Uh, keep up to date with the, uh, with the latest products and the latest videos that we put up. Uh, but that's it for now, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, like I said, link in the video description. Look after yourself, and I'll see you again next time.